In problem 13, we have three set of pair conjugate fractures. Uh, so uh, either these fractures you know, has no displacement that we call it as a joint, or displacement can be evolved along one of these planes as a fault plane. But most of the time, these conjugate fractures can be seen together if there is no displacement along them, right? So um, these are very important features because they show us the direction of the main stress axis, okay? They show us the direction of sigma 1, sigma 2, and sigma 3. And those sigmas actually shows us what kind of uh, tectonic system, okay, was evolved in this region. Is it the extensional system? Is it struck slip system? Is it compressional system? All right. So let's first see how we can find the axes and how we can uh, interpret with respect to to the Earth's surface. So uh, first of all, uh, the conjugate fractures um, uh, they have the they have one intersection and always going to show us the direction of sigma 2, all right? That's easy, right? So it doesn't matter uh, these two conjugates in which direction they are oriented. Uh, intersection always, it's going to be sigma 2, all right? And as you see, there are two type of angles, right, between these two conjugate fractures. Either we have the uh, acute angle, right? One is here, one is here. On the other image, it's one here and one there, right? On the other side, one is here and one there, right? So we can draw a line that is bisecting this acute angle, right? And that's going to be, okay, sigma 1, okay? Always is like that. The line that is bisecting the acute angle, that's going to be sigma 1, all right? Uh, the other angle, okay, is, let's say, this angle that I'm showing with the, with the green line. This is the obtuse angle, and I can actually draw a line that is bisecting this obtuse angle, okay? And that's going to be always sigma 3, right? And it doesn't matter in which direction uh, our two uh, conjugate fractures are oriented, all right? So always line that is bisecting the obtuse angle, that's going to be sigma 3. But we know this as an Anderson rule. Uh, let's say uh, here, okay, let's say here is the Earth's surface, right? And uh, let's say here we are, our location is fixed, but the orientation of these fractures, you know, are changing in space, right? For instance, uh, in A and B and C, we have different orientation of these fractures. Um, and as you see, the sigma 1 or 2 or 3, okay, they are oriented in different directions in these three uh, different scenarios. In figure A, all right, you see sigma 2, it's perpendicular to the Earth's surface, right? In figure B, sigma 3, it's perpendicular to the Earth's surface. It's in figure C, sigma 1 is perpendicular to the Earth's surface. If, um, let me, I... Write it again. Here we have sigma 2, here we have sigma 3, and here we have sigma 1. If sigma 2 is perpendicular to the Earth's surface, always we're going to have struck slip uh, faults. Let's say if the orientation of sigma 2 it's perpendicular to the Earth's surface. In that case, uh, if there is any displacement along these uh, fractures, it's going to 
turn into the struck sleep fault. If sigma 3 is perpendicular to the Earth's surface, in that case, okay, we're going to have uh, reverse faults. Which means if there is enough displacement in one of these fractures, that fault has to be a reverse fault. Right, and on the last one, if sigma 1 is perpendicular to the Earth's surface, in that case, we're gonna have a normal fault. Right, this is very, very important. Right, and as you see, um, our location on the Earth's surface is fixed, but the fractures can be oriented in different directions. Right. And the sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3 are consistent with respect to the, uh, to these two fractures. And the reason we see, uh, you know, different type of the faults at the Earth's surface, which struck a sleep fault, reverse fault, or normal faults, that's because of the orientation of the sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3 in space with respect to the Earth's surface. So keep in mind, if sigma 2 is perpendicular to the Earth's surface, uh, you're going to have the stochastic fault. If you have sigma 3 perpendicular to the Earth's surface, you're going to have reverse fault. Uh, if you have sigma 1 perpendicular to the Earth's surface, then you're going to have a normal fault. So, all right. So how are they going to uh, look like on the uh, stereo net? I'm just very quickly going through this because I think it's quite important. Let's say this is my stereo net. If your sigma 2 is close to the center, okay, um, that's representing, you know, a kind of struck slip systems. If your sigma 3 is close to the center, then we are looking to the, the compressional systems. And if your sigma 1 it's close to the center or at the center, then we are looking to the normal systems, all right? So in the next problems, we're going to go through that, okay, in, uh, in details.